All right, we're back here with the Game 5 Rundown. We're kicking off Year 2, Episode 27. Hopefully, we got some good stuff for you. Jim Barino, back as always. How you doing? Amazing. Welcome back to the doing? show. How you uh, doing? <laughs> what? Nothing, nothing. Go ahead. Actually, before I get started, I just thought of something. Did you watch the um, the showcase the other day? I saw the emoji where uh, Dimitri, is that who it yeah, was? Yeah, Dimitri. Yeah, and he did your wave. Yeah, the little the emoji. Uh, Ron Paul wave. His is a little different. His, right? Mine's like this. His is like all awkward and weird. Not sure what, what was going on there for Ron Paul, but I, I was a fan back in the day. Yeah. Pre but you Ron saw Paul. the emoji that's kind of like that, right? You're going to have to get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or oh, not emo sure. the em emote. You're yeah, going to have to I get need, that emote. I need my own. Right? They should make one with your wave. In a bikini. In a bikini. An Alluvium bikini. wearing a bikini. That would be fire. An Alluvium bikini. All right. So let's get started with Alluvium Zero and morphopods we get the introduction of morphopods what private beta 2 for the overworld and you can get them in the overworld you shoot them down you capture them but they didn't really have a purpose um but we're getting our first glimpse of what they're gonna do and they're actually gonna be integrated into alluvium zero again we don't know too many details but in the alluvium zero chat julian had given him most his most recent update and it says that there's gonna be a new structure called padarium which is basically for the morph morphopods and without giving too much detail, he said these are going to help speed up plant growth. They want to make it so that you don't feel like just removing plants are a burden. Mention here, get your farmer hats ready to go. So I know you are you don't play too much Alluvium Zero, but I mean, what do you think about if you're in the overworld and you're catching morphopods? Like, are you going to try to maybe sell them to people playing Alluvium Zero? Um, I kind of doubt they'll have that much of an effect on Alluvium Zero. So they're probably, I mean, who knows? But I, I personally, if I'm playing Overworld... I'm probably buying the shards and buying all of the resources and solely trying to capture cool stuff. So, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be skipping over them for sure. And, and maybe they turn out to be some kind of weird, crazy good moneymaker because they they work so well in IZ or they're needed. But, yeah, probably going to be skipping them. It, it could be because right now when you're... When you clear the plants, you earn some of these, uh, I think they just call them credits. I don't know if they're going to change the name. But then these credits can help speed up your structures and help you mine some of the resources, not the fuel. But if you're collecting these in the, the overworld and they're helping you speed up the process in Alluvium Zero, which is basically an earning game, it could like indirectly help you earn some, some money from selling fuel a little faster. I don't know how common they're going to be in the overworld. But I'd say they probably do have some value. And if you don't want to spend the time selling them, you can just send them over to me. I'll give you my uh, <laughs> my IMX address. And you can just, whenever you collect those morphopods, send them right over. For sure. From playing the overworld, um, I see them see like two or three every run. And obviously those numbers are probably going to be adjusted before we see the open beta. So it depends. But as it is right now, that's where, uh, where the ratio lies from what I've seen. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We still don't know much about Morphopods, but I just thought that was pretty interesting, so I wanted to yeah. throw it in here. Um, a couple more quick updates that he put in here was a new Go feature, which is basically going to act as a tutorial. And if you're trying to accomplish specific goals, this Go feature is going to tell you what the next steps are or what you need to do to to accomplish that goal and maybe this is kind of hinting towards uh like quests maybe daily quests in alluvium zero where every day you log in you need to do a certain amount of things for earning some resource so we'll we'll find out more about that go feature soon and then they also mention here that they're having progress on the play store for android more of what this tells me is that they didn't mention ios or the iPhone. So I don't know, hopefully we get some updates on that because I need it to, to be working on the iPhone. But at least yep. if you're on Android and using the Play Store, it looks like there's progress being made and that should be good to go by the time open beta hits. Do we have any updates on iOS at all? I've asked seen? a couple times and they've said that they're they're working on it. It's not like they've given up on it. Like they're they're working on it, they're making some progress. Uh I just don't think they're there yet. But we still have some time. And yeah. I, I I'm also pretty sure that they'll make it browser or make it available so you can play through the browser on your iPhone. It's just the the app store that's causing problems, I guess you'd say. That's so, still kind of annoying, but it, that's better than nothing. It is. It's definitely annoying, but 
like you said, better than nothing. It's better yeah. than me not being able to, to log in at all. Sure. And if they have to start out that way, then I'll make it work and just wait until it's ready for, for the App Store. So let's move on here. I want to know, how are you going to optimize your land? Like, are you going to try to just get as much fuel or are you going to be one of those people hunting for blueprints? I'm not really going to use my land in a typical, like, usual sense. I'm saving it for a video idea, a series idea down the road. But if I were to play it, like, normally, and, like, I would probably go for blueprints simply because I'm more of a gambling man and it just sounds yeah. more fun to go for, go big or go home, you know what I mean? Yeah. I This has been talked about a little bit recently. I think originally the idea that a lot of people thought was that these blueprints are going to be the only way to make skins in the game. And now we're with like rewards for, you know, buying a certain amount of discs or some of the rewards are skins themselves. Do you think that devalues the blueprint proposition in, uh, in Alluvium Zero? Or do you think it's unaffected because they're going to be different blueprints? I think it depends. It depends on if we get too crazy with how many... In a perfect world, from my perspective, with the information that I have right now, so don't hold me to this, but from my perspective right now, the way I would see it is I would prefer if like 80% at the very least of the total skins come from Alluvium Zero, because yeah. that is kind of like how they were set up and it was how they were promoted. But I think there is an argument or a case to be made for, say, like certain promotional skins to be like this is worth putting it into the game regardless when it comes to like promotional things or like setting up business relationships with other important entities i feel like it's uh, acceptable a decent chunk of the time especially if we don't overdo it but if we yeah. do like too many skins like we had with Iluvatars and we release those consistently i could see that being a problem personally see i'm kind of like torn on this because if i get a skin through a reward or some promotion like that I'm probably going to value it more than most of the skins that your blueprints can make in Alluvium Zero outside of those really rare tier four, tier five blueprints. So when I think about it, I think grinding out those blueprints, you're going to get a lot of worthless blueprints. And I think it's going to be more of like that gamble, like you were saying, like if you happen to get that Ramfire or that Afisto or something really rare. I think it will pay off for you, but I, I just have a funny feeling that most of the blueprints are going to be creating skins that are just not worth much at all. I personally have four plots of land, and I'm going to use at least two of them just to grind out fuel, and then one or two of them I'm going to focus on blueprints and just kind of gauge what I think is giving me the better value, and then, you know, progress from there. Yeah. I think uh, I think you're spot on with a lot of the skins being. I, I wouldn't say worthless or cheap because like most skins are like five to ten dollars, but I couldn't I wouldn't be surprised if we saw most of those skins around that price a yeah. year in if we have a good player base. Yeah, and, and you also have to take into consideration that you need to get skins in in order of their stage. So before you can get a ram fire, you need to get the ram fee and the ram fight blueprint. Ooh, I didn't know that. That's crazy. Um, Unless something has changed, I'm pretty sure that's the case. So you need to get them in order. So that means everybody is going to be getting those stage one blueprints before the stage two and stage three. So it, and it makes those stage threes even more rare, but it also makes all the stage ones common because that's everybody are, is getting those stage ones first before they can get the, the higher stages. So I think most of the stage ones, it, Kind of like along the lines of Iluvatars. Like, uh, if they're tier one, tier two, stage one, they're probably not going to be worth too much. You get to those higher tiers, higher stages, I, I think you will. I think it'll be worth it for you. But it'll, it'll be hard to get. All right, let's move on. I labeled this ILVETF just, just to be a little funny here. But recently, we've had a little bump in the crypto market. They, there's a lot of Bitcoin ETFs filed. And even just yesterday or the day before, I saw that it was an ARK Invest filed for an Ethereum mm -hmm. ETF. And like, I expect Bitcoin ETF to get through at some point. I think a lot of people are getting, are expecting it next spring, kind of before the halving. If an Ethereum ETF gets approved, I think that means a lot more for, for Web3, Web3 Gaming, for Alluvium, because that's... You know, that's the base layer that, you know, most projects are, are operating on right now. So, yeah, I think everything is going to get a boost when that Bitcoin ETF comes. But does the do you think the Ethereum ETF could open the door to 
to more things. Maybe maybe baskets of different crypto coins as an ETF. I mean, an ETF could be that could be a crypto gaming ETF someday in the future. What do you think about that? Yeah, it would be it'd be that would be one uh, risky ETF to buy into personally for me. But uh, yeah, I think um, I can't believe that they filed for it's a spot ETF as well, right? So it's backed one to one. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I think the Bitcoin ETF will. will probably play a huge role in how the bull cycle plays out ethereum etf if that goes through obviously i think that really would be huge for the altcoin like market in general i could see that being like a parabolic shift there that would be absolutely insane because that it would give the investors so much confidence coming into this side of the space instead of just bitcoin which is seen as that safer asset in crypto yeah comparatively to the rest of the market yeah i i feel the same way like bitcoin is just obviously it's the number one crypto but like a lot of people still see it as something separate from the rest of the the market separate from the altcoins mm -hmm. but once you start getting more like backing behind uh something like ethereum then that just opens up the doors to all of these other web3 projects you know co coins tokens nfts I mean, who knows? Maybe we see an NFT ETF at some point in the in the future. Like you never know. But I I just I got a little more excited when I saw the Ethereum one filed. Even if it doesn't get through this time, it's just you know baby steps. You know, yeah. in the right direction. All right, I picked a, this next topic just for you. It's September seventh at the recording of this video. We got three weeks for before we get PVP. We haven't heard anything about it. Every time I've asked and everything I've heard about it in the past couple months was they're still on pace to have it out in September by the end of Q3. I mean, not only like, are you expecting it actually in these three weeks, the showcase yesterday that, cause I said there was a couple of small things that Grant was talking about with PVP. And I, I thought it was pretty cool with the drones. You're more of a PVP player than me. Like you said, like at the end of each round, you're gonna, your drone's gonna hit the other drone. Yeah, so it's just okay. So in that case, you've never played team fight tactics or anything. No, I haven't. okay. So it goes in rounds, right? Your yeah. your board faces their board. Whoever wins, it's just like a flashy animation that, like, say they spit out fire at your avatar and it hits your avatar, and it it it's just an animation. That's just what happens when you lose the round. And depending on how much you lose the round by, you're gonna get more damage done to your drone yep but the animation will be the same and when your drone dies that's when you lose the match yep exactly so if you if you get like just completely smoked you might lose in one or two rounds but if you're if the rounds are really close it could go on probably maybe three four or five rounds that i'm not sure what because we don't really without seeing the way that it's going to play out um it yeah. would be hard to gauge how many rounds or how exactly that's going to happen but yeah round over round you get hit you get your life drained you know it's just like a, a game of Yu-Gi-Oh if you played that yeah i mean that looks good he grant also mentioned that he had played uh he was playing dick kings and there was still some bugs that needed to get worked out but yeah. it sounds like they are playing it in the background in you know internally and i'm still hopeful that they get it out in these next three weeks but every day that passes by that we don't get an announcement who knows yeah it, it would feel really bad if we didn't get it um this month it would feel really really bad if we didn't get it next month so that's <laughs> like not an option like not getting it next month is not okay but nah. i'm sure i'm sure they um even if it does get delayed i'm sure they have something worked out but we'll see what happens yeah no, I, I know that's like your biggest thing right now. I was I'm, I'm messaging sorry. you like over a week ago and I was just like, hey, if you want to, uh, you know, do anything on your channel, like I'll, I'll come jump on your channel and make a video. And then I, I think your response was just like, I don't care about anything other than PVP. I really, I just don't. Just, just get PVP out. I don't care. Like, I just get PVP go. out so I can make some fucking content, boys. I need to be making that money, bro. Please. That's right. I'll come onto your channel and beat your ass in PvP. Hell That's that. not going to happen, but you can try. It's fine. I will try. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, so this is another thing I started in that showcase the other night. Here we go. Grant was talking about how important it is for these NFTs to look great. Let me play this. This is going to be the actual NFT animation. So forget what's on the game side. 
like when you open up your wallet, you should see this NFT animation. See if it'll play. No, my internet's bad. I'll try to overlay this video on top of it. But my question to you is, it, like, is the NFT art really that important? Because if we're trying to go to the whole web two gamers and they just want to play a game and they don't care too much about the NFT side of it, like, what does it matter? Why not put more focus on the in-game animations and textures and all that than than making such a big deal about the NFT side? Um, because okay, here's something because you're asking this question as if like this frame, like this uh, the video of this koala alluvial. This would be in the game no matter what. It's just you own this now, right? Because if you pull up your your Pokemon in your Pokédex, that has the picture there and then the stats. So this has to be in the game regardless. The only difference is that you own this now. You know what I mean? So you, like, if it's going to be in the game and these big uh, gaming titles put all this effort into it, you need to be putting even more effort into it. You know what I mean? I, yeah. think, I think graphics being good is something that is downplayed a lot, but... It, even as a RuneScape player, this might come as a shock, but I think graphics are actually very, very important. It's like a subconscious thing that gamers don't think about, and they think they might not think that it's such a big deal, but when they're in there and they're you're sweaty and your back stick into your chair, and you can't tell if you're in real life or you're literally in the game or not anymore, that's that's when it matters. Trust yeah. me, graphics matter. Maybe I just didn't understand this right, but the way Grant was saying was just like like he's been focused on the actual nft art but when it's in the game like like it's in the game it's in the game when he says it's the nft art i think like okay so when i open up my metamask this is the the art that's going to show this is the animation that's going to show like in my metamask or is this just what's going to show up on on the aluvidex because to me that just seems like it that's in game like why call it the NFT art? Because, I mean, technically you own the line of code that makes this art pop up. Just like, why would you call anything NFT art? Because you don't own the actual picture, you own the code. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, saying, I, get, I get what he's saying, though. If you, like, if you pulled up this NFT outside of the Aluvidex, is it going to look like this? No. I mean, it, it could if, um, if they put it onto their software. But no, it, it, I don't yeah. think it'll just pull up. Well, like so it. that's what I'm saying. Like, is this NFT going to okay. refer to this image when it's in the Alluvium ecosystem? Or is this this art and this, like, animation going to be actually built into the NFT itself? You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. I would assume it would be built into the NFT itself, but... Which I means you should be able to pull it up on other platforms and see yeah. these animations. And I think yeah. that would be really cool. That would be very cool. But I don't... I don't know why you would move it off layer two, though. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but technically you could. You Yeah, technically you could. If you wanted to move it off, what, off layer two and then sell it on OpenSea, I guess technically you could do it. <laughs> you could if you want to waste all the gas fees. But yeah. It's I'm just curious. That, I'm just curious if on OpenSea, this is the animation you're going to see or if it's going to be something different. Yeah, I would hope it is. I don't know. But either way, that I mean, these animations do look fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Grant was saying he saw a recent Pixar movie and it disappointed him because what what they're creating is better than what Pixar is making right now. It's not even a flex. It's just, being... It just is true. Like it, it is. It objectively is true. You can't argue that. Yeah, it, it is. It's so good. I can't wait to catch these. I can't wait to, like you said, to to know that this is actually mine. See these it's animations and be like, I own that thing right there. It's going to be so much fun. <sighs> We're getting closer and closer. Almost there. We are. All right, let's move on. We're making a quick episode out of this one. BitBoy Crypto. They're... Since our last episode, I think a couple days after the last episode we filmed, like things got a little wild over there and we were messaging back and forth. What a crazy situation, huh? I made one comment or I made a, a post on X about how, you know, I got my crypto journey started with Ben on on BitBoy Crypto. Like it was his channel and his content that turned me on to Bitcoin. I watched a lot of that in the first, like a lot through uh 2020 i was watching his channel a lot of his content and that that really got me started the the past like year year and a half maybe two years i haven't been watching a ton of his stuff but i i don't know i i felt a little bad when i saw that because like 
he built this up. I truly do think he means well in the crypto space, even though he pisses off a lot of people. But it was just crazy to see what happened. Like just getting, you know, building up your own thing and then getting tossed out. You know, what did you think about all that? Yeah, that was that was a weird situation. Um, yeah, I, I think I actually people may call me stupid or naive for saying this, but I actually kind of agree with you. I also think he means well. I think he just makes he's probably just a a I don't know him, but he seems like a very emotional guy and yeah. reacts on impulse instead of thinking things through sometimes. But yeah, that that was a very sad situation and it does feel weird to see someone like get their own business taken from them like that. Even right? like no matter what they did, it's just, that's crazy, bro. That, that's that's crazy. What he I'm started like... the channel, right? Like he's the one who started yeah. that YouTube. That's that's I don't give a fuck what happened. That is actually yeah, I mean... insane. I guess the way that he like made it a business and I don't know, he probably gave roles to other people that gave them the power to do that. So, I mean, I'm sure he's regretting how he, he set that up, but it really is crazy. Like to me, if the whole organization didn't like what he was doing, then they should have left and started their own thing, not kick him out of what he built up. Not to say he's not at fault. Like it seemed like he was getting into some, some crazy stuff, you know, had like an affair was doing, I wouldn't say drugs. Uh, I don't know what I say, like weight loss pills or in steroids. And it, I'm sure it was affecting him. Um, I'd like to think that the, the rest of that organization like tried the best that they could to get him on a better track before they just decided to give him the boot. But oh, yeah. something I saw today, and I don't even know if maybe you didn't even catch it, but he started up a, a brand new channel and he put out a video this morning. I think he already has like 25,000 uh subscribers on it but he's just he's just Ben Armstrong on YouTube now and his video basically said that it's not a hundred percent that he's completely out of BitBoy crypto but he's kind of starting to move on because he doesn't think he'll he'll end up back there so he's yeah, starting yeah. his own brand he said he's going back to the the early days of how he got started how he built up his last channel and I don't know yeah it's a uh, I mean I don't know the situation well enough to have like a strong opinion so i won't comment on if it, he like deserves it or what anything yeah. but bro in his video that he sent to have them put on their channel as like a message to the fans yeah. that was it was just wild bro like you could tell the sincerity in his voice and his wife is an angel bro that is crazy to have that much like love and respect for someone i yeah i don't want to get into it too much but it was a it was a cute moment on her part but yeah uh, best of luck to ben don't fuck up in the future yeah i guess moral of the story here is one if you build something up protect it a little better because he probably opened up the doors for something like this to happen and two make sure you don't get yourself into some shit. Like he was clearly doing some stuff that he probably shouldn't have been doing. It was probably toxic for, for him, yeah. his family and uh, his organization there. So I don't want to say he did it to himself. I do think he's genuinely like a, he means well, even though he does a lot of stupid shit. But in the end, it is what it is. He it looks like he's building up his uh, a brand new thing now. You know, I did subscribe to his channel. I want to see what he does. But you know, I wish him luck. I hope he's in a better place now. It, at least, if anything good came from this, maybe it did kind of open his eyes to the fact that like shit wasn't going the right way, and he needed to to fix it. Hopefully, he's in a better place now, and you know, still staying in the crypto space. Good luck to him. Hope he does. Uh, hope he does good things. Yeah, maybe since he's a small channel now, we can invite him on to the, the game <laughs> rundown. Yeah. Right, let's go for it. I'll send him a DM. All right, you, you send him a DM. To, tell him. Tell him I got like almost two thousand subscribers. We're, we're a pretty big deal over here. You know, we're, what I mean? we're a pretty big deal. So he should definitely come join us. A couple segments, maybe the whole thing. Who knows? True. True. We'll turn him on to the whole game five space. Yeah, depending on how much he pays us. Last segment here, leak of the week. Then I might try to go catch some American football because I just started up today. Got my fantasy football team. All right, this is my leak of the week. I saw these on the showcase the other day, and they looked really cool. And these are just the sharks. These are your Pokeballs of Alluvium, and they already look great. And Grant was saying that they're still a work in progress. He was saying how as you get to the higher stages of these, they're going to look more clear and transparent and shiny i guess so is this 
tier zero shard is kind of broken, broken, foggy. As you move on, he said they're not there yet, but it's going to look a little more crisp, a little cleaner. It's going to look more transparent. Um, I don't know. These already look really cool and is definitely a step up from little Pokeballs. Little what, white top, red bottom you throw it <laughs> right like and these yeah. are nfts too that's the that's the coolest part about alluvium and in, in just web3 games in general like pretty much everything that you can get in alluvium is an nft this isn't just going to be 2d art either this is going to transition into 3d art as well so it's probably going to like rock back and forth and you're going to see how the light shines on it or the light shines through it maybe i might just start collecting some shards just to look at them for sure you gotta you gotta treat them right and then they'll do what you want i, I just i, I can't don't know what i art. meant by that by the way that, that sounded way weirder than i meant for it whatever just keep going no i mean that's it like i i it just goes to show every little detail like is going into alluvium it's not just the alluvials everything is gonna look cool the augments those are gonna look really cool too yeah honestly the very the newest one i mean this we've seen all of this already but you know when you play the arena you don't really for me personally i don't I'm used to playing TFT, so I keep it zoomed out. And when you do that, you don't really realize how fluid and perfect the movements are for the auto attacks. Those are actually, that's actually insane. Yeah. Every, What's going on so in this clean. video? Well, oh, how so, are they, they're just duplicating? Is that so, like, <laughs> he's, his attack his, move? His Omega is, he teleports and it leaves like an attack dummy. So it's just his outline. It doesn't attack or anything, but it takes damage. And the other alluvials will be aggressive towards it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a really, really cool design. That's pretty cool. But how did it do it twice now? Because he used two Omegas. Oh, each, and it'll, probably, it'll just stay there it. until it gets, like, defeated? Yep. Uh, that seems a little OP to me. It's not, trust me. It's not? It, it might be when PvP comes out, because people can use, utilize it more to trick people. Yeah. Because this will be a interesting character, I think, when PvP comes out. Um... But, yeah, as it is right now, I, it's not, like, really a big deal. Yeah. And, I mean, everything is should get balanced anyways. Even if it starts out unbalanced, exactly. the goal is that, you know, everything is not going to be equal, but it's going to be balanced, what, like, according to its uh, mastery points, yeah. basically. And, ba and if this does end up being too overpowered or you could apply this to anything, they could reduce, like, the health, the time that it's up. The amount of time it takes to, for him to even use his own big ability. There's so many ways to bounce, bounce the game. It's, I don't think it's that big of a deal. When people see abilities or omegas that seem like they would be really overpowered, you can just scale back damage, scale back how long it takes to go off. There's many different ways it can play out. Yeah. I'm actually just really excited for the balancing in Alluvium. Because I've played games in the past where it, it seemed like their whole model was introduce new characters that are bigger, faster, stronger than the previous ones that make you need to buy the new ones in order to compete. Like, what do they call it? A power creep? Yep. And I hated that because you, you always felt like you needed to, to get something new to, to stay competitive. But Alluvium, with its structure of NFTs and even having the game council that can kind of work as like some accountability for the team to keep things balanced it, it excites me because if you just only collect these uh set one alluvials and years down the road we're in set three set four you should still be able to be competitive because everything is gonna remain balanced it's not like these the new sets are going to be stronger so you have to buy them just things being balanced excites me i don't know why i want to get my my deck that i'd like to play with and know that it's not just going to get priced out in the future because a game wants to make more money. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Plus, I mean, balancing everything, like 50% win rate across all units, I mean, that's not possible. But if they can get to as close as possible, it actually helps them in the long run If because now they're getting um, what's residuals off of each sell and buy. What is the word I'm looking for? Uh... Not royalties, is it? No. Yes, royalties. They're getting royalties, royalties, royalties off of yeah, the every set time one when set two and set three comes out and the price raises because there's less of them. So yep. it, it's a good thing to do that for sure. Yeah. For them. 
Definitely. And we, we still have a long ways away before we even get to a set two of these things. But it we're going to look back when we're old and gray in 20 years and be like, oh, we're on set 10 of uh, Alluvials and on set 25 of Pokemon. <laughs> like, remember when they first came out? Yeah, I, I hope that's the case. That would be such a good... Life will be fun if Alluvium is good. So uh, do your right? job, ILVT, if I know you're listening. <laughs> I mean, I, I've put so much time and effort into Alluvium already. Like, I don't ever want to do this again. I want this to be, like, yep. the game that I get to play for the rest of my life. Like, 20 years of Pokemon? Give me 25 years of Alluvium. Yep, that's where I'm you know? at. 25 years, I'll be 50. By then, I'll be the most famous live streamer, entertainer, content creator, playboy to ever walked God's green earth. I think then I can hang it up and we can leave Alluvium in the past. Yeah, I'll still have you on to the rundown episodes. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, that was uh, hopefully a quicker episode for everyone to watch. Episode 27, we're done. We'll be back in two weeks. Hopefully, we have an announcement uh, of PvP pvp and or uh you know some more details of something new coming out this was uh, a little tougher to put together a rundown because it was just it seemed to have been a quiet past two weeks yeah. but you know after doing this for a year i know that things might seem quiet for you know a month and then all of a sudden there's a ton to talk about so next episode i'm thinking we're gonna have a lot more to talk about but that's it jim marino thanks for joining again yeah, yeah. and uh, i'll catch you in a couple weeks